This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so glad uh, to have you join with us today uh, virtually here at the Church of the Redeemer Presbyterian. Today is All Saints Day. It is a day Christians uh, commemorate all the saints of the church, both known and unknown who have attained heaven. Joining me in leadership uh, today is Elder Cassandra uh, Jones Havert, who's the liturgist, Elder Kevin P. Moore, the AV coordinator, and Miss Sandy Luanika, Minister of Music. Remember those on our thoughts and the prayer lists and join in the birthday celebrations uh, this week. Uh, Mr. Charles Johnson, uh, birthday is today, I believe, and uh, Sandra Boykenberg on Saturday. Uh, also, I want you to be in prayer and, and, and fast and pray this week, uh, over the next couple of days, actually, as uh, people all over the country go to the polls. And we ask, pray that for God's divine uh, self to make itself known in this process uh, so that God's will be done. Uh, now, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us worship God. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord and God answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to the Lord and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. Let us pray. Creator of all, sustainer of all, savior of all. Your glory and majesty are beyond our understanding. Your power too awesome to behold. And yet your love enfolds us as a gentle breeze. Savior of all, sustainer of all, creator of all. We bless your holy name. Amen. The opening hymn is just a little talk with Jesus. Morgan State Choir.
Let us now prepare our hearts for the call to confession. God loves us so much that we are all called the children of God. When we see God's face to face, we will resemble our Lord. In the anticipation of that day, we come before God and confess our sin, seeking to repent and be reshaped into a closer image of the one we follow and worship. Let us pray. Good morning, Redeemer. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord of every tribe and nation, on this day, when we remember and give thanks for all the saints, we are mindful of the countless ways we fail to follow the example of loyalty and faithfulness. We capitulate to adultery. We worship the false gods of our time instead of bowing down before the lamb on the throne. We imagine all people gathered in praise of you and lament how we make our witness through our divisions and strife. Forgive us for acting as if earthly powers are ultimate. Hear our plea to find our hope, our life, our salvation in you alone. Accept our repentance and reshape us in the ways that glorify you. Amen. Amen. Assurance of pardon. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in the Lord. O oh, fear the Lord, you God's holy ones. For those who fear God have no want. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us prepare for the offering. Come before God with gifts and offerings that reflect your joy and gratitude for God's grace and goodness. Come before God with praise and worship joining with all the saints as we present to God with gladness a portion of all that God has entrusted us to steward.
please join with me in reading the stewardship prayer. Alpha and Omega, our beginning and end. There is nowhere we can flee from your spirit. No place God forsaken or unable to be transformed by your redemptive power. As we remember the saints who ran the race before them and were called good and faithful servants, we are humbled and inspired to seek to follow you more closely and imitate those who imitated Christ. We offer these gifts as a sign of our desire to be loyal to you and loving to our neighbors. Take them, bless them, distribute them in ways that reveal your goodness to your creation. Amen. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Psalms, 31st, 34th chapter, verses 1 through 10, and then uh, verse 22. The book of Psalms, 34th chapter, verses 1 through 10, and then verse 22. In this Psalm, David proceeds to give reasons why God should be praised and glorified. It is his testimony of what has happened when he has relied upon God, hearing and answering his prayers. Now listen for the word of God. I am reading from the New International Version. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see mm -hmm. that the Lord is good. Yeah. Blessed is he who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. Mm -hmm. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord shall see him. And then verse 22, the Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm saved 
invite you at this time to turn your attention toward the New Testament lesson, uh, which can be found in the letter to the Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, beginning with verse 2, and then we're going to move over to verses 39 through chapter 12, verse 2. That's a mouthful. That's, that's Hebrews 11, verse 2, then 39 through 12, verse 2. Let us listen to what thus saith the Lord uh, to God's holy and inspired word. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, 
looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This ends the reading. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy and inspired word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have chosen as a subject to from which to preach uh, on this All Saints Day, the theology of deferred gratification. The theology of deferred gratification. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. Since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The professor in the very first class I attended my freshman year of college began with this statement. You must learn how to deal with deferred gratification. In an earlier manifestation of my alma mater, Cheney University, uh, it, it was it, it, when I went there, it was called Cheney State College. But prior to that, it had other names. It was a normal school. And at one point, it was called Cheney's, Cheney Teachers College. Being one of the earliest HBCUs, uh, the oldest in the mind of many, its primary role was to educate to uplift the race by training students who would there, then go forth into the world to teach the sons and the daughters of a former black slave. The goal was to inspire the self-interest in the students, uh, to desire to want to be positive in, uh, 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 impact people in the world, and as a rule, do nothing for them. Don't tell them anything that they can find out on their own or that they can do for themselves. They wanted us to become seekers and searchers, and researchers, to, to go deep and to find out what it is that's going to unleash uh, the, the potential of our people. Any person who has tried to teach and or lead a, 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 a classroom or a group know something about deferred gratification. You spend a whole year, maybe more, maybe more than that, pouring knowledge into an individual or a group, and then they graduate or, or they just move on to the next class or the next thing without you seeing any evidence that what you have shared has made a difference. And I'm sure there are a few of our teachers, folk who have taught you and I, who have gone on to glory not knowing how we panned out. Motivational speaker Brian Tracy says the ability to discipline yourself to delay gratification in the short term in order to enjoy greater rewards in the long term is the indispensable prerequisite for success. 
And I imagine the, re the reason I am able to resonate, I was, uh, that I was able to resonate with the professor's statement about deferred gratification is because I was already predisposed to it in theory and in practice. You, you, you can't grow up black in America without knowing something about deferred gratification. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which abolished slavery in 1865, took another 100 years to gain just a little traction with the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1965. And as, former, and as the, a former charter member of the Church of Redeemer, law professor uh, Derek Bell once wrote, and still we are not saved. In the landmark case, Brown versus the Board of Education, the Supreme Court declared the, league, the system of legal separation unconstitutional but then ordered only that the states end the segregation with quote unquote, deliberate speed. This vagueness, this ambiguity about how to enforce the law gave segregationists the opportunity to organize resistance, deferring the intent of the idea. The same can be said about the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that prohibited us racial discrimination in voting. How did that work out? Clearly gratification is deferred in communities of color as we approach the elections in a, in a few days. I remember being taught in elementary schools about John Chapman, better known as Ap uh, Johnny Appleseed, who was uh, 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 an American pioneer uh, 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 planter or a nursery uh, person who, 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 who allegedly introduced apple trees, allegedly, uh, to large parts of Pennsylvania, Ontario, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, as well as the northern counties of West Virginia. He had planted seeds, and you know, had he planted seeds in one place and then sat there to wait for the trees to grow, it would have limited his ability to spread them in other places. He had to trust that what he invested in the ground with the help of Mother Nature would produce favorably in his absence. Deferred gratification, church, is a noble confession, a concession. It, it, it does not come normal to us. We live in a world governed by instant gratification. We want it our way right away. Is your internet too slow? Then get high speed internet. Does it take too long to put gas in your car? then pay at the pump. It, it, is snail mail really that slow? Well, then send an email or a text. Is, is, your, is your fast food not so fast? If a process doesn't satisfy us immediately, we toss it out and replace it with one that does. Some people treat their friends that way. Others treat their partners and their, their spouses that way. We don't have the patience anymore in this world today to, to allow things and people to develop. We want it now. Show me now. One great struggle we face as Christians in this life is that we think we should have all this peace and rest right now. No waiting. And when we are Christians, God should bless and reward us with a lack of problems. 
Christians shouldn't get sick. Christians shouldn't have trouble paying their bills. Christians shouldn't have trouble or problems with their marriages or, or difficulties raising their children. All the peace and the joy and the bliss of heaven ought to be ours right now. Immediately, instantly, right now. But then when these things do happen, when we find ourselves far from God, unloving toward our neighbors and full of unbelief, despair, and, 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 and other great shame and vice, we wonder what's wrong. We don't feel much like saints, do we? Why? Because we have let go of Christ's word and in our unbelief, we have not heard what our Lord has said to us about being saints. The letter to the Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians in the first century, in the first century of Christ, in Christ. These Jews had come to faith in Christ through the preaching and the teaching of evangelists who, uh, who, who, who had heard, who, who themselves heard Jesus. They, they had been Christian for a while now. If you look further into chapter 13, verse 7, it suggests that they, these folk uh, had been Christians for about 30 years. But their faith in Christ was being undermined by intense persecution. The author tries to encourage the wavering Hebrew Christians by reminding them that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament covenant. To the new Christians who were steeped in Jewish history, he tells them despite the greatness of Moses, Jesus is far more superior, greater than all the prophets who have come before. And his point, the writer's point is, in Christ, the new covenant supersedes the old covenant and that Jesus Christ reigns supreme. And, and because of the supremacy of Christ, uh, the writer of Hebrew called on Christians to persevere in faith in, in the face of persecution. You must remember Christianity was a movement left in the wake of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that was a threat to both the Roman Empire and the Jewish institutions. This letter is a warning to all Christians the consequences of not persevering. In, in, in chapter 10, verse 38, the writer says, my soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. Those who shrink back, what you know, who retreat on the battlefield are so lost and left unfulfilled. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. The writer then proceeds to remind the, the readers of, of this letter the examples of devoted heroes and sheroes of the faith. Faith enable Abel to, to make the perfect sacrifice. Faith enabled uh, believers like Enoch to walk closely with God for 300 years amid terrible wickedness without wavering. Faith enabled uh, Noah to foresee danger and act on God's warning about the flood. The faithful who did their part for God, like Abraham and, and, and Moses, uh, the folk who, who by faith passed through the Red Sea, the, 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 the lady of the evening or the prostitute uh, Rahab, who, who assisted the Israelites in capturing uh, Jericho, the, the warrior Barak, 
who, who answered God's call to defeat Canaan, Samson, the strong warrior and judge who relied on God's given power uh, to do mighty acts, Jephthah, the leader of Israel who defeated the Ammonites, David and Samuel, we all know about him, those two, all carried the mantle of righteousness towards securing God's promise. You know, the lesson here, church, is faith enables believers to endure many difficulties, trials, and tribulations in Christ. By faith, believers can live a life of sacrifice and endure mistreatment, torture, and abuse from the world in the name of Christ. Faith in Christ does not guarantee a life free from struggle and disappointment, but a life that is full of trouble and includes many demands for to forsake uh, a material gain and leave behind worldly pleasures. The people named in the text did enough, I believe, and I'm sure you do, they did enough to be canonized as saints. They, 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 they deserve to be celebrated in real time to receive praise and accolades, or as we say, to receive their flowers while they yet live. But still, we are told in 1139, yet all of these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised. The writer of Psalm 34 and 22 assures us that though death may shut down our righteous journey, the Lord will rescue his servants and no one will take refuge in him, uh, uh, will be condemned. No one who takes refuge will be condemned. So, so, the, so our, the, our, our forebearers are in a safe place, but they're there empty handed. They didn't get or see what was promised. In death, the dream has not ended. The baton of history has been simply passed on to those who still, who are still in the race to glory. The reason for this delay, this deferred gratification is given in the next verse. Since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. The humbling, awesome truth is that God has granted us, those who are alive and hearing the gospel today, an even clearer presentation of the truth, so that we'll be able to believe and join in that ultimate reward. It is kind of saying to you today, my friends, that we in the present stand on the shoulders of those who sacrificed in the past. And I remember I took uh, my children to Philadelphia to see the parade of the 76ers basketball team. Uh, they had reached the, the championship series. They lost, but they, but they did well. And they, they, so we have, they had a parade for them uh, coming back into town. The crowd was massive. And everybody wanted to see Dr. J and Julius Irvin and, and Charles Barkley and Moses Malone. And as the, the vehicle uh, carrying the players drove by, I realized my young daughter at the time, she had, couldn't have been no more than, oh, I, maybe about three or five, four, maybe five. Uh, I, she, I realized that she couldn't see. The crowd was just too great. So I hoisted her up onto my shoulders and her weight pushed me down, my body down, making it difficult for me to see uh, the spectacle. But in doing so, it lifted her head above the crowd so she could enjoy the parade. They who live into God's promise, who made ultimate sacrifices that lifted 
the next generation up and out of the abyss of life, did it at the expense of deferred gratification. They paid the price, but never got to see what was there. They never got to see the, the spectacle. They never got to see the promise. Maya Angelou referred to those of us in the present as the dream and the hope of the slaves. In this election season, regardless of uh, who you're pulling for, there is a sense of hopelessness. Some are asking the question, why should I vote? It's not going to make a difference. Well, the easy answer is you vote because folk who only had dreams of voting sacrificed their lives and resources so that we could exercise the right. People who were denied the right to even go to the, the precinct, go even to stand in line at the polls made it possible for you and me to, do, to, to cast our ballots. Our benefactors, the saints of old, died in faith not ever seeing the promise of a bright new glorious day. Church of the Redeemer, let All Saints Day be a time of reflection. It offers an occasion to, to remember, to think back, and to offer thanks for those who have shaped our path by the path that they walked. These days remind us that in the body of Christ, Death does not release us from being in community with one another. And as we reflect, or, or, or as we reflect, who lingers close in your memory? Ask yourself the question, who, who lingers close in your memory? Giants like Jefferson and Mary Grace Rogers. A few, a, a few of them I've met and worked with along the way, like they had, they had names like Battle and, and Mix and Bell and, and Harris and, and, and Payne and Farr and Rubens and, and McKay and McKinney and Jefferson and McKinney Wright and Gravely and Nelson and Hamilton. And there are so, so many more, so many others known and unknown who have, have made a difference on this missional journey. Saints who are with us no longer in body, but in spirit. A woman named Jan Richardson said it another way, for those who walk with us. She said, for those who walk with us, this is a prayer. For those who have gone ahead, this is a blessing. For those who touched and tended us, who lingered with us while they lived, this is thanksgiving for those who journey still with us in the shadows of awareness, in the crevices of memory, in the landscape of our dreams. This is a benediction. The writer of Hebrew concludes, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. It is, a, it is a challenge to all of us. It is a challenge to all who love the Lord, his body in the world, his hands and feet in the world to honor those who have paved the way by assuming their position. And somehow I hear the appreciative voice of young Everett Arankin saying, as Christians, it is time to assume personal responsibility. I, I've heard him say this every time I've sat down with him. It is time to assume personal responsibility. It is time to answer the redemptive call to deny personal interest 
to pick up your own cross and to follow Jesus into the dark places where the brave dare not go to make known God's love. And it's time to pick up the cross and follow Jesus into dysfunctional realities where relationships are being tested, hearts are broken, dreams are being aborted, where respect has given way to hatred and where justice has been smothered by a dense cloud of oppression. It is time, church, for us to stand up and be counted, time to make an indelible impression on the malleable landscape of the 21st century so that on that great day of judgment, when all is said and done in Christ, our faithfulness will be recorded in the book of life and we can take our place alongside the great crowd of witnesses with those who have paved the way. I don't know about you, my friend, but when I run the last mile of the way, when my earthly journey is over, in that great getting up morning, when the pearly gates of the kingdom swing wide open and the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number. I want to be counted. I want to be received. I want to be with the crowd of witnesses when the saints go marching in. But until that day, let us celebrate the journey of those who have gone ahead saying for all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confess, by name, O oh Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It is time to take personal responsibility. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. Today's affirmation of faith comes from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father and before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven he became incarnate by the Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he arose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, he proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church we affirm the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let, let us now center ourselves as we uh, hear the invitation to the Lord's Supper. Come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you the right to come, but because you need mercy and help. 
Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Amen. That brings us to the great prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Supper, Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, uh, Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of J Joshua and De Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. 
This is my body, uh, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the, when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Great is the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you at this moment. Elder Allen Eolus Nelson. Elder Ruby Anita Rubens, Deacon Ogner Byrne Daniels, Reverend Dr. Dorothy Ann Davis McKinney Wright. Let's have a little word, uh, time of silence. There may be some, uh, maybe some others that you know. Lift them up in silence at this point. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after he blessed it, he broke it. He said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner which Jesus offered his disciples the bread, I now offer it unto you. Eat ye all of it. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. In the same manner in which Jesus took the bread, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for the remission of sins. And as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you show favor of my death until I come again. In the same manner in which Jesus offered his disciples the cup, I now offer it unto you. Drink ye all of it. Jesus says, I am the vine and thou art the branches. And apart from me, you can do nothing.
please join me in the prayer after communion. We humbly beseech you, almighty God, to grant that those whom you refresh with your sacraments may serve you worthily by a life well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns, world without end. Amen. Amen. As was the tradition in the early church, when all was said and done, they sang a hymn and departed. Our sending him as we come this far by faith uh, by the Morton State Choir. If you know it, sing along. Surrounded as you are by such a great cloud of witnesses, take courage as you face each new challenge and comfort when you pick yourself from a fall. In whatever good you choose to do, proceed it with hope, accompany it with prayer, and follow it with thanksgiving. The blessing of God most wonderful whom the saints have trusted as creator, redeemer, and oh blessed spirit will be with you now and evermore. Amen. south, east, and west, I invite you to pass the peace. The peace of our Lord be with you. And also with you. Amen.
Hey, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for the lovely gifts that you sent my mother as a best breast cancer survivor. Oh, Amen. So, all she right. was so yeah. thrilled that you all were thinking of her. And Jacobed, the card was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Blessings and to her. And Marie Ross also, thank you. And her granddaughter, Mia. We feel like we've been wrapped in love and pink. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank Bless you so you. much. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Right. I wanted to thank also, I uh, talked to Jacobed and I talked with Cassandra, but thank you all again for the beautiful breast cancer awareness um, gifts. They really, really warmed my heart. I was just so surprised. And so thank, thank you me. all so much for everything and for your love and for your prayers. Amen. 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 But we thought even though we weren't together, it'd be nice for people to be remembered. Yes. Thank you. Hello, Rufus. Well, hello, everybody. I just wanted to say that this array of pictures is a beautiful sight to see on Sunday morning. Yes, it's sir. Oh, yes, sir. It's the a beauty hey, radiating from the face of Jacobed, especially, is just oh, really oh, delightful. Hey, all see. right, Rufus. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling my wife, that is a beautiful <laughs> smile, Jacobet. And I saw the enthusiasm with which you you got into that closing uh, song. And yeah. it's just delightful to see. Thanks. Replica so of you, uh, Brother Rufus. The replica of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now you got to sing, Rufus. You got to sing now. That's right. I also want to say thank you to. Reverend Morris for a beautiful sermon on today's date. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful to hear. Appreciate it so much. Bless you. I, I don't know if everybody knows that Rufus has a beautiful bass baritone voice. He does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, Robin has been trying to get me to come into the choir for about 40 years. Robin, <laughs> I think it's time for you to stop <laughs> making that request. Well, I used to sing in the men's choir, you know. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I had a solo one time. Yeah. I had a solo, and everybody got up and turned their backs on me. Uh, no, they didn't. <laughs> oh, no. You could hear it better. Sing, <laughs> uh, make them turn around, Rufus. <laughs> But those were the days. Yes, yes. Those were the days. Yes, they were. They were. And they still are. Listen yeah. at your voice, how strong it is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's what happens when you when you pass a certain milestone. You 21, start, right? Start gaining strength again. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. Right. that's right. good to know. Absolutely. You got something to look forward to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeedy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Louise. It's good to see you. Hi, Jerry. Hello, Louise. Yeah. Hey, Hi, Louise. Hi, How are you all doing? Yeah, doing fine. Doing fine. So am I. And thank you very much, Lizelle, for showing your face. <laughs> you talked about <laughs> that. Lizelle. Oh, I see Lizelle. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Jeanette. And Jeanette. I have a, yes. I have a question. Hi, Jeanette. How you doing, Jeff? Everyone. Well, Mrs. Adams. I have a question. Yeah. I saw in the paper this week that somebody came down and destroyed that display in front of the White House oh. in which we had some kind of sign. I'm wondering if anybody knows what the fate of that Redeemer sign has been down there. Mm. I don't know if everybody saw that story. I did read it too, Rufus, and it said that uh, unfortunately, most unfortunately, there were two African-American women who came down from Pennsylvania. I don't know if they said Philadelphia, but somewhere in Pennsylvania, and, um, and a young white fellow who had come from Texas. And, and the three of them uh, were, were um, you know, anti-abortion people, and they, they felt that, uh, that somehow the signs were 
uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, it was crazy, but, but they, they took the signs down and, and there was a woman from I think out in Camp Springs, Maryland, who comes every day at five o'clock to take care of those signs, and she came and put them and put them back up to the the extent of her ability to do that. But when the three people saw her putting them back up, they came and tore them down again. And this time, the the according to the news story, the two African American women literally tore the signs to pieces. And, wow. and yeah. But, uh, but the end of the story was that some people had uh, then come back and tried to help this one woman to, put, to do what they could to rehabilitate the signs to the extent that they were able to put them back up. Mm. But apparently this uh, white boy who the reporter talked to said that you know, he had come from Texas because he was upset that Black Lives Matter was uh, for abortion and that, they, you, you, that the, uh, the signs kept people from being able to see the White House and blah, 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 blah. It, you know, crazy, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. So I don't know how our sign fared. I, I have no idea. There wasn't uh, persecution. We, we're, living in, we're living in some difficult times and yes. Reverend Morris, yeah. Reverend Morris, Reverend yeah. Morris is uh, uh, the, 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 the- Chairman. The, yeah, and the scriptures, the scripture reading, uh, yes. the standard and, and the one that Sterling, they're both just so timely, so yes. uh, so right, what we need to hear, what we need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, faith us through this. Yeah, well, no matter what happens this week, it's, our work is already set for us. It's going to get tough. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's already tough. Yeah. So uh, this is when we have a, opportunity to shine and yeah. now shine and, and comfort doesn't go together <laughs> that's right that's what that's where we are right now we we really have to have to fight to yeah. keep, keep god and in the and jesus christ in the forefront of things mm -hmm. if, if if not them fairness and, and, and equality yeah. so, absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. you know. 